Here we are this morning, Ainapono Kauai, at a leak loop property with James Jimbo Alalem. James, why don't you give us a history lesson here before we start talking about this property of the area? Well, I was born and raised in this area when they never had no hotels way back. I was born in 1957, so in the late. Uh, 60s, and this place never even had hotels. This was just all pasture land and had homes before in this area. Just little houses, that's about it. And we used to always come to over here on the ocean side and go fishing with my father. And a lot of times, a lot of bones used to wash up on, the, on top of the, the sand. So this used to be an old, 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 old uh, racetrack in the old days when I was growing up and before it became a pasture. So this place here that we know get a lot of, a lot of EVs, just like the whole coastline, a lot of EVs. But this one in particular, uh, the EVs had already talked to me about them being removed and touched. They need not to be touched at all one of the most sacred areas in like Coco Palms and all these Wailua areas all the sacred to its people. So wasn't this part of the uh, the Queen's uh, rain area or uh, area? Well, like, actually the whole place is. And this used to be where the, the people used to have like villages in the old days and when the wars used to come the people used to take off and the uh, wars used to just come into this whole area. And the Queen area was in Coco Palms area, all the way up to the mountain. See that valley back there? All by uh, Mount Wale Ali, all that. And then it's the, the whole area of Wailua, it's the complex of Wailua. That's what it is, all the way up to Mount Wale Ali. Here was the battleground. In the old days, so that's why it's so sacred. You should have villages all over the place in this area. If you go down by Kauai Sands, they still have remblance of where they used to hang out by the ocean and used to have those uh, stone balls and where they used to stuff and add. They still in existence yet today, but nobody really cares about it. Our history is already like almost gone because of all the tourists is coming here and, and all the developers coming here and all those guys that come and sell the land that they don't even have any deeds to. The land still belongs to the people, not to the state of Hawaii. The state of Hawaii is illegal. So let's talk about what's going on here in this property since nothing's gone on here in well since you were even born really and they've tried to do developments on this property for many years and this is the first time that any real work has been done as far as this fence being erected about a month ago um, what do you know I mean are there do they have the proper permits according to what should be well you know as far as the permit I don't know what actually the state or the illegal county of Hawaii is doing on Hawaii. Because if you ask them to see the permits, they defer you to some data department. And then they defer you back to the same department, just back and forth. They won't give you no answer to what you're trying to ask for, like the permits or anything actually. They're just trying to uh, the word is they're just trying to just manipulate the whole thing and they won't even give you no answer whatsoever to your questions you know so it's kind of hard just knowing that this property just sitting here and they should actually like turn it into one part or something for everybody over here and not even touch it you know you see a billion one big massive hotel so again, the permits, they didn't know what they're going, going to go on with this whole thing. 
Now there's been some talk about the shoreline having issues and where it should or shouldn't be. Uh, what, what do you know about that? Let's walk that way and talk about the fencing and shoreline and... As far as I know the shoreline, in the old days that I was told, the shoreline was at least almost like 500 feet. But again, if it was, it's up to that uh, Konahiki in this area because they're the ones that actually took care of all the lands and, and the people in this area. Because of the erosion and the changing of tides all the time, it's um, it's always changing. So the old people, they know not to build close to the ocean side. And the houses that they built in this, this area was also could be removed and reassemble it, it was all it was so the word is i'm looking for it it was all detachable detachable it, it could be reassembled somewhere else if the high water would comes up too high they can remove it back the stone walls again they can also you know build again stone walls for little structures like fishing villages and things like that they also use stone walls for for blocking from the wind and things like that but again but the konahiki they also know how to take care of the fishing how to take care of the, the changing of tides and things like that but today you have all these people with all this degree and certificates they don't know nothing you need to go back to the old ways and take care of the land, not of the more um, the more developed way, where they think that oh, everything is about tourism, everything is about rich people. It's nothing about that. People come here for the sacredness, for vacation. They call it paradise. But again, if you look at it, our culture is being erased by developers, by all those guys that sell in timeshares and all these and hotels. Every time you dig in the ocean front, you're always going to come up with something. So the coastline, it varies. So that's why in the old days it was like 500 feet or more you cannot build. But in the old days, the people that used to live in the villages, villages, you know, they knew what to expect. Everyday life was different for them. It was not uh, safe. Everyday life, it was just life itself, not like what we have illegal state of Hawaii have today. So. So this, it seems there's been surveyors out here over the last year trying to figure out where the shoreline should be. And a number of the neighborhood associations and others have been out here with them. And yet there has not been a shoreline cert done, it seems. Um, the people who are trying to build on here, I guess, have, have applied a couple of times but never been had a certified shoreline. What do we know about that, or do we? Well, the shoreline, again, you know, it, it's, uh, it was the Konehiki's responsibility. So everybody knew the shoreline, how the current runs in this whole area. You know, anytime you build up some kind of new in, embankment or things like that, the, the current going to change it. That's where the sand gets eaten away. The shoreline is one of the most important things we have today. It's changed, like again, again, like I said, it changes all the time. It's never going to be the same. The shoreline is like, to me, it's sacred. It has the, the peacefulness of it and things like that. And also the land here is below sea level. So you're going to hit uh, sea level and water at, at the depth at least three feet at the most. So how can they really say that they can build a hotel here? All we see here is 
illegal hotels in them. Definitely they're having a lot of sewer problems with the hotels because of the, the sea level on this area. So, you know, the shoreline should be left at least 500 feet. You cannot be building nothing within that area. They're always changing the, the shoreline. They're always saying it's 10 feet, it's 40 feet, it's 100 feet. Well, the last time that I know, and this was back in the 19, I think 1960s or more, it was 150 feet from the high water mark. And which, what is the high water mark? It's the highest tide. The highest tide that you have that the water reaches. And from there, it goes 150 feet. But this was in the 60s that I know of, because I have a paper on that. So now the county or the state want to make it a little less for the convenience of the tourists and bike paths and all these things that they want to make for them. But again, it's for them, it's not for the people. They don't care about the people. They don't care because it's not their land. It's all about the money. And even for the state of Hawaii, they don't even have documents that the queen actually gave the, this lands to them. The lands that they got is, is, uh, from the state is all stolen land. And one day they're going to have to face it. We already gave, gave them the evidence about that. They know the truth, uh, the, not the truth, but the truth. But they still claim ignorance to the fact. But that is the truth. So with the high water mark, Obviously, storms come in, and here being in the islands, we have, well, like today, it's overcast. We had large rains yeah. yesterday. Um, the water changes constantly, like you said before. What determines, a, uh, what, what determines where the water would be considered high water? Well, that's why it's very interesting. That's why in the Kupuna old days, that we had, you know, they make the determination depending on what they look in the over the horizon. The Kahuna would look at the, the clouds, certain kind of clouds, certain kind of wind. So the Kahuna would know actually what are the the skill the skillful people would know what kind of weather would be. And it all uh, it's all depend on the weather itself. It's called uh, the environment. The Howlers used that word environment. In the old days, the word was used as just weather. So we know that uh, the old people used to always used to tell us they had a certain point when the certain weather would come during the year. They didn't know that the weather would come up really high on the high water mark. So that's why in the old days, the old people knew. Today we don't have it. The old people is all is selling out themselves to this government so that they can, you know, make money. Let's go toward the beach and talk about that high water mark and where they have fencing lane. Here we are walking toward the beach, Jimbo, and I noticed on this path the cars and stuff are using, it's it looks like nothing but sand. Yeah, this whole place is sand. I mean, when you dig, this is sand and water. That's what they're going to hit in this area, all sand and water. And then the sand doesn't have the, the sensibility like concrete. It's always going to be shifty, you know, like San, San Andreas Fault kind of thing. The sand is always going to be soft and always going to be shifty. So that's why the Bible talks about uh, don't build your your uh, house on sand build it on firm rock yeah yeah right. paraphrased of course but. yeah well here we are we're looking at fencing they moved the other day that had been laid out here on a number of different places and over here is a pile there were the other day and we'll include this in here fencing that was up over by these bushes uh, looks like for some reason it's been taken down 
what I understand was about a week or two ago they were given an, a stop order for three months. What do you know about that? I I only heard about it through the grapevine. Sure. You know, so um, as far as that, because nobody would actually invite me to any kind of meetings anymore. Because, you know, when I go to a meeting, I want to find out what's the truth. So, but they won't let the people know what's the truth. You look at that post right here, you can tell which one they took out of the ground. You know, the, the coloration of the post. So that two posts right, was the wall right there. So that looks like a, probably about three, four feet deep then, yeah? Uh, yeah, that is at least uh, about six, seven. So over here, now things have come up about grubbing and grading yeah. and if we look here this this has been the earth has been moved probably because they were taking out the uh, the fencing but they have they've moved bushes they've gone through here and what would be and I correct me if I'm wrong could be considered grubbing and grading yeah that's what they call grubbing and grading anytime when you remove any kind of vegetation from the ocean, in front of the ocean, that is grubbing. Anytime you have to cut the wood, brush. So one time there were stakes out here and, and paint showing where the, a, a line was. Any idea what that was for? I noticed there's uh, ribbons in the bush over here. Well, that was supposed to have been for uh, boundary line. So in this area here, where the bushes have been moved, there's flags and different things. So if the shoreline is supposed to be, well, let's just say a couple hundred feet from what would be considered the top of the knoll right there before it drops down further into the beach, uh, that doesn't seem to be correct. It's not because the water, and this was just recently when we had the big storm about almost, I'd say about almost like um, six years ago, so maybe a little bit more. I seen the actual water came all the way up here on, this, on the highest tide when they had a big storm, they had a big storm. So where a lot of people will be walking and biking. Yeah. yeah. So that's why, you know, the Okupunas, they know that the high water mark, nobody would build close to the, to the high water mark or the shoreline is because at a certain time when you have um, storms, the water would actually come way up here. And this is just a surge that comes. But again, America, they always think they know better than the original. Let me point out something to you. You see this right here? This is a sandstone. Okay? Now the sandstone was here like, geez, way before I was even born. But over the years, when they develop, they dig up and all this stuff, they remove all the sandstones. So in, real, in reality, the sandstone was actually way up here. The sandstone in the front there was all, you know, being manipulated. So in reality, the stone that you see here is one of the original stones that in the old days that was here. But now they're kind of pushing it back, pushing it back. So that looks like about 30 feet from the top of the, the beach yeah. area there. Yeah, we know 
common sense of the Pupunas about high water marks. But today, because the other people think they're so smart and they're so educated and they get certificate talking about they know what they're talking about. It's like burial council, same thing. Burial council, they come and digging up all the EVs all in this area and they're actually removing them so that the developers can build and say later on down the road, oh, there was no EVs around here. But in reality, they're not going to find all the EVs that they're going to dig up. Now let's talk about that. You had founded the Kauai Kanakamali Burial Council uh -huh. and, and uh, helping to try to preserve and locate EV all over the island and different hay owls that you help take care of. Let's talk about the uh, the EV here on this little piece of uh, ground and around the area. Well, I know that they have EVs in this area because born and raised here, I've seen them. And in this area, they have EVs in this area. But the only problem is, is that when they start digging, these archaeologists people, they're not doing their job. They're hiding. They're hiding and they're removing all the EVs so that they can see later on that the develop, developer said oh, there's nothing EVs over here, which is bullshit. There is EVs here, no matter what the tourists or anybody said, there is EVs here and you cannot actually find them all. But we know that there is over here because there was a uh, a vision that I had, the two giant EVs told me that if they ever got removed from here, is that a lot of people would die. And so far, I had four visions after that, and keep telling me about death four times. So I know when they mess around with the EVs over here, a lot of people would die. Now, at one time, I was told that there was uh, a very large or two large skeletals uh, remains found here on this property many years ago. Yeah, when I when I told this archaeologist when they was on that section, there was, uh, I think his name was Jim, Jim somebody, his name was. And uh, in the vision that I had, the first one, there was two giant skeleton um, EVs that was in this hole. And in this vision, these two giant skeletons was kind of standing up. And this kupuna told me to pray for them. And I told him that I didn't know how to pray in Hawaiian for these people. I don't know, you know, how to help them. And the kupuna told me, you know how to pray for them. He was taught. We already knew how to do them. So I said, okay, I'm going to do my best I can. So so when I pray for them, by this time, the skeletons, these two giant kupuna evies, was almost standing up out of the hole. And when I was kind of like chanting and praying for them, what happened was the evies started to sit back down, go back into the fetal position. And then Kupuna told me that my kai, my kai means it's very good. And then I woke up. Then I seen the guy Jim over here. For some reason I cannot remember his name, but his name was Jim. And then so many years later, he was digging up this area. And then so I told the guy, I said, hey, what are you guys looking for? And they said, oh, we just, uh, developers wanted to see what they had in this area, see what they can find. And I told them, there's two giant skeletons of Kupuna Evis that you guys might find. And then if you guys do, leave it alone. And then he just thought that I was crazy or something. Just another stupid local guy that knows jack nothing about nothing. So anyway. When I told him, yeah, okay, whatever, let's see you later, then I walked away. About a month or two later, he came looking.
looking for me. And he finally got hold of me. Then so I met with him. Then he told me that they actually they found actually one of them. So I know they had two of them it's right next to each other. But when they found this first one, the skull, the thing was bigger than a human skull. Quite large, bigger. And so I told them, whatever you do, don't even touch them, don't dig them up, just cover it and leave it alone. But look at it today. They're not listening. So they're bringing up this whole area that they want to develop and just make it so much pili care for the people. But I know for one fact, if this Eve has ever been touching this area, that something bad is going to happen to the people. And it's, it's no discrimination whatsoever. I mean, people, men, women, children, everything. So just be aware, if you guys don't mess around with these Eevees over here, a lot of people are going to die. Let's go over to the corner of the property and look at these boundaries and these fencing that they uh, have put up. Talk about that a little bit as we walk to the other end. Yeah. Let's take out, you know, look at the, the post. Check it okay, out. Jimbo, here we are at the uh, corner of this lot and Kauai Coast Resort, otherwise known as the Beach Boy. We can see through the bushes there, it's a little hard, but there's a boundary tape of some kind. And then the trail they've made through here. And then the fencing down the line here. So there again, there's a bunch of trees here cut, Jim. Mm -hmm. I'm a little confused on how this was allowed. Developers, they came, the developers just want to develop this whole area. They don't care about saving shoreline access. All they care about wants to do these bike paths, want to do it for the tourists. That's, that's all it is about. Now, if you look over here, you see this ribbon. This was here. And they call this a shoreline. This is the one right here. Okay? This was the original stick that was here called a shoreline. Kinda doesn't make sense. The shoreline is this close. So something is wrong with the development. And then if you look here, this is another thing. This is an original pin. How close it is to the shoreline. Well, I'd say that's pretty close, Jim, yeah. considering the water comes all the way up to here at any time. Yeah, because that's, that's, that's a regular high tide. The water comes here. If you look at the tree right there, see how the tree is? In the old days, these trees, you never could see the root. The tree was into the ground itself. But today they call this being all like water uh, washed here. If you look right over there, before these rocks or this uh, reef was never exposed, you could walk, this was all sand. The old days when I was growing up. Look today, it's all reef growing. And the vegetation line is being all eaten away. So slowly this reef is being kind of being eaten out here. Yeah. So really, other than a lot of fishermen being out here fishing and that, this really isn't that good of a or safe of a beach. No well, the fishermen hardly come here anymore because of all the erosion. The fishing is not so good. 
have been depleted here over almost 15, 20 years now. The fishing is not good. There's too much silt in this area already. The fishing is, has gone way out. So whatever fishing people talk about, it's not even bird fishing. Our island is being so disrespected and being just given away to the tourists on the river. Let's take a walk back to the other end over by the Marriott. Let's see what's happening over there. One of the things I noticed, Jim, a lot of development construction around the Ina. This is the only barrier fence I've ever seen put up that was wood. Most of them were that black tarp like at the top. Any thoughts on that? Well, I know that in this area, this is a dust fence. This is not a dust fence. This is for keep out what they're going to find in this area. So, once this whole thing gets put up, you cannot look inside what they'll be finding because what they're going to be finding here is very, very significant to the people. But this is the first kind of dust fence I ever seen in my life. Normally they just put the screen, yeah? Not wood like this. Yeah, so they were preparing to lay these fences out to either be put kind of where they're at. I noticed there's some flags over here. I'm not sure what those are for. Um, if that was for bike path markers. I know they've been trying to work on that. Um, or they were going to put them out there where the fence was here in the trees. And they were, what was interesting about that is here this stops here. This was all open. And then they got into these trees here near the water. Yeah. And they had a fence up over here, just a partial one. So as we get down to the toward the other end, we'll see if that one's still there. But that didn't make sense either. Well, this one here was a test. A what? A test. A test? It was a test to see how far they can go. Ah. That's what it was. To see if the people would even complain or say anything. Or would even notice. So it was a test, actually, for that. But somebody knew what was going on, and they said, hey, this is a high water mark. So it was already confusing with the high water mark over there, if you notice, with the two pins. Sure. Yeah? Because one was further out, and then one was brought yeah. back in, say, five feet. Yeah. And then here, you see, this is not even 100 feet. Yeah? High water mark from here. This used to be an old road that all the fishermen used to always come across to go down to the other end of the uh, bullshit. This should be an old road before. Yeah? Yeah. Well, let's That's go down do. to the other end down there by the Marriott and, let's... Yeah. and talk about where they wanted to put a hay out of all things and put it close to what we would consider high water mark um, they wanted to move all the EV mm -hmm. into that area, which I, I totally don't under, even understand that, why they would even want to move uh, the bones, but obviously they've been doing that for years. Yeah. And in reality, there's no beach here unless they're going to make a beach like Honolulu for these people. This area right here was used to call an old slaughterhouse where they used to slaughter the cattle when this used to be one on uh, on field before, like on pasture. And they used to feed all the sharks out here. So once in a while the sharks would come in, that's how, you know, we used to call it a slaughterhouse because they used to throw all the carcasses, the guts and all that stuff up in the ocean for the sharks. Oh, is that, that's what you talked about before up here yeah. by the Marriott on the corner there? Yeah, right in the corner. So, all but the old structures to hide all the cultural things was, was here. They're hiding all this 
sinks in the old days. So they took out all the cement structures and everything just because they want to get rid of the, the cultural part of that. Any remblance of any culture they want to get rid of. I mean, the thing wasn't bothering nobody. Now, isn't there a little bit of a trail out here as we're walking where some would consider to be the, the old road or bike path out here in the uh, Ironwoods? And let's, as we go out here and look at that, let's talk about these Ironwoods. A lot of people do not like them, but yet many people do because they help break up a lot of the uh, rough weather. As we look here, too, it looks like there's uh, more bush cut all yeah. through here. Now, they've cut this stuff, and there again, I, maybe I don't understand, but isn't this considered grading and grubbing? That's, Part of it. That's what, uh, if you look in a dictionary, it tells you exactly what grading and grubbing is all about. So here we are on the little path that a lot of people use next to the beach, which is maybe, I don't know, let's say 10 feet. Um, and they tagged a lot of these trees last year. And what I was under told, some of them were trying to be cut down. That's what I heard too. They wanted to get rid of all these pine, pine wood trees. But these things here have been here since I was born. Most of these trees. So because they're not an indigenous tree, they were brought here. What have they done? Have they they serviced this beach? What do you mean service? Well, have they helped keep the shoreline? Oh, do you mean the tree? Well, in the the days when I was growing up here, because I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it looks like this over here was cut, and uh, one over here. So, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. In the old days, when I was growing up, we used to run through here. So the trees was a little bit thicker than this. Oh, there was more trees. Was more tree had more trees. In this place. But because of, I guess, you know, when the people came. Sometimes they use firewood, you know, when they make camps and stuff like that, when you go fishing. So, over the years, get less and less. But this right here was the original trees that I knew that was here. This bigger one. So, has some people do not like the ironwood tree. What... Has it helped anything on the Aina? Because most of them that I see are, are close to the beach. Well, normally everybody, is this a normal person for me? I love the ironwood trees. Because they give us shelter from the rain and things like that. A lot of times, a lot of people from other places don't, don't like the ironwood trees. Why? Maybe they don't like trees where they're from. <laughs> Maybe they like cement better than trees. Everybody's different. What they have to understand, this is Hawaii. You, or they came from America to be here. So why would they like to see cement where we never had cement before? Very you know? true. Looks like some more stumps over here that have, uh, some of these look like they've been cut some look like they've been broke off, but I've been around here long enough to know that it's gotten thin in this area. Yeah. Well, a lot of times, the trees, they get old, die, new ones come in its place. Yeah. And as we look here, you know, some would argue about these trees not having a good grip in the sand, but yet they're still here. No, because what they don't understand, again, they come from America. These trees, sand used to be all the way out there. Yeah? These things never never exist in the old days. Because that sand, it's all the way out to the ocean. So you're sand. pointing at uh, the sandstone yeah. edge out there that yeah. most of the time we don't see because it's covered in yeah. sand. And it, if I remember right, just a few years ago, it was covered a lot more than it is. Yeah. That's right now, the, the erosion of the sand, now the roots get exposed. So all these fancy kind of people with all the fancy degrees,
degrees and certificates and they pay them millions of dollars just to make an assessment of, <laughs> of, of somebody else's culture. You know, and say that, oh, this is what it is. It's simple, it's dumb, you know, it's class 101 for common sense. I mean, you know, so, but yet all these fancy people sitting down on their asses, pushing one pencil, making all this determination for other culture people. I mean, it's like, oh, it's over my head for me. I mean, what happened to the common sense? We have more fencing out there. It's been piled up. <laughs> Obviously, they had this all laid out. And we're trying to prepare. As we see more stakes out there, I see our yellow little flags. Uh, not sure what all of those were for. But they're kind of in a group. So hard to say what they were staking out there, yeah? Yeah. What you have here actually, it's a cultural genocide. A cultural genocide, that's what it is. Basic, bottom line, 101. Basic genocide of its people and its culture. There again, more bush that was full veg vegetation here disturbed and here we're almost to the uh, sidewalk that they've blocked off that's supposed to be beach access now that's also interesting to me considering they've made both sides of this property beach access but not allowing anybody down the middle but yet they have two openings up near Alika Loop wasn't that supposed to be the original bike path I mean not back but uh access well that's what we've always used many people have used that yeah. I mean for that for lie down cement for the tourists but that wasn't actually designated you know access well wasn't that the split of the two properties wasn't that part of a property line could be I don't know about but if there was a split for a property line but to me common sense will tell you if they put him on cement walkway for the public that we have the public asset. So there was a waste out cement. Hey, let's go ask this fisherman what did he catch? The, the, the tide has turned around. There's no local people. Now the local people have to ask, what do you catch? Yeah, he may not want to be on film. He may not support us, yeah? You know, just like, get this on, right? Just like a local fisherman, right? Hundreds of years, generations to generations, all of a sudden, now, we gotta ask, what do you catch? Huh? Irony, huh? Yeah. Our, our culture has been erased. You see that right there? In fact, I saved one, one tourist one time over here. He, he died though. I couldn't get him enough, you know, enough in time. And uh, we know at a certain time, right here, everything funnels out on the high tide. And so, how interesting would they now they would put on rescue tools over here? We already knew, like, when I was growing up, this was a bad area for swim. Well, I know over the last few years, we've had two drownings of, uh, of tourists because yeah. they didn't listen to the locals or anybody else that said, don't go swimming. They, I know one of the men were told by the fishermen, don't go out there, and kept uh -huh. saying how he was a great swimmer. Well, found out that he uh, didn't make it. Yeah. I was one of them that had tried and save this one tourist guy that died. His wife came in okay, but the guy never, never survived. Well, here we are getting closer to the uh, Marriott, looking over this property here. 
Um, you know, with this being a walkway, pathway for many, many years and having construction stuff out here with no security, uh, seems a little unsafe to me. Yeah. The safety, they always say, the safety for the tourists. Never mind about the local people, because we can handle it. Safety for the tourist, uh, you know, what can I say? I mean, again, all I can say is cultural uh, genocide. That's all it is. About money. It's all about money and elimination of one's culture. Well, we've heard that before, haven't we? Yeah. Well, here we are. We've been walking this path, and we've been averaging about 5 to 10 feet off of the knoll where it drops down into the sand. So I'm guessing, not knowing a lot about how the ocean works, that water comes up over here and past these trees all the time. We don't even see it. Well, you look right here. You know this right there? This is how high the, the tide came up. You see how the trees... You can tell that. Sure. The highest tide, this is probably as a, as a normal tide, the highest tide that they have. Not a storm tide or, you know, a disaster kind of tide. But this is just a regular high tide that came right up. Look how you can tell. And look, we're right at the edge of the vegetation already. Yeah? Yeah. So it's always going to change. So, so when they just to say, this is, yeah, check this out. This is high water mark. Okay? Okay, so let us be make sure that it's established as high water mark. So the thing never changes for years and years and years. By the time they get another change, the high water mark and the vegetation line reaching way over here already. <laughs> so there's nothing so they cannot tell what is a real high water mark, yeah? Because they say, say it, this is the high water mark. But in reality, the old days, high water mark is way out there. You know, so. This guy, huge. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're getting down here closer to the Marriott, Jimbo, and uh, this is kind of where the slaughterhouse area was, yeah? Yeah. This is down here in the corner is where they want to put the uh, the hay out. Therefore all the EVs right there. <clears throat> Look at this beach though. It's unreal, yeah. Just coming up closer and closer. Never even had the uh, rock that cold in the old days. So it's interesting. The trees before was further out, I remember. The pine trees. The what? The road that we used use in the old days. The road was well here. This was the road for right here. Uh, this was all pine trees. So there were a lot more pine trees here than before, yeah? Yeah, it was thicker. Because actually the road was right here in the old days that we used to use. The road used to go all the way through to the bull set, or all through this whole area.
slaughterhouse is right here. The slaughterhouse is right here. Right here in the corner area? Yep, right here. Right in this area. How long was that there for? I just took it down. I. See, when this hotel was built, it was still here, yes. When it was first built. So I think it was in the late 90s they just took it out. The 90s. So. I mean, that's, that's been a while, but still, that wasn't that long ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. It was right here. I remember the, this tree. This area right here, I remember this area. It would be a big slaughterhouse. You had this big, um, like a tub in there before. And right outside, you used to have this crane, this big... Uh, gear looking thing and that's when they used to hoist up to the cows and they used to slaughter them and then the carcass they, they just throw the carcass out on the reef and the sharks can eat them. Well that's one way to get rid of your excess yeah? Yes. <clears throat> we used to camp right here in this area right here every summer. This area right here. But you know what uh, developers always say? When you talk about your old days, they say don't cry about spilled milk. It's not their spilled milk, is it? No. Nope. They don't really care. But I like what they get to offer. <laughs> What's that? I mean, put down. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are at the other corner of the property, down by the Marriott. And they had another fence down here. Obviously, that's been taken down from the other day that was close to the water. I have to walk out there and see where that was, yeah? on the edge. So what's your, what's your final, well not really final because we'll walk back toward the road where it is, but what are your thoughts on all this? Because you were born right in this area and, and lived here your whole life. My thoughts goes very deep. I cannot explain how I really feel about it. I cannot even imagine the, the pain that I get. I feel for its land alone, besides myself. You know, seeing all the fishing ground, seeing tourists, Sitting out there in the chairs, sunbathing. They got no clue whatsoever about culture, about respect, honoring of our dead people, our Kupuna Ivi. They got no clue. And yet, my depth of my pain and my sorrows sink very deep into the, the depth of our kukuna Ivi, you know, of the destruction that's well, going to happen. I know you do a show called The Truth on Channel 54, and you talk about a lot of the sovereignty and a lot of the different things that have gone on and are going on, and, and many people watch it, and more and more are starting to come forth and talk about these things. Why do you think the the Kanaka Mali or the Hawaiian Nationals, whatever you want to call them, that have been here 
who want to support this as a country, why aren't more of them coming out and standing up? Well, they've been brainwashed. They've been brainwashed, and they basically, bottom line, besides being brainwashed, they are afraid. They are afraid to understand who they are. They are afraid of who the birthright is because their birthright has been taken away by all these entities that they created for them. They brainwashed them so much is that they need to be dependent on America, this illegal state of Hawaii, for them to get ahead. Because if you notice today, they like credit cards, they like a family, rather if, you know, whatever it is, whatever culture they come from. They like the high trucks, and they also like on, on fake home that they won't gonna get. It's all about a facade, it's all about fake. So, then you come to the Hawaiian issue, you know, that all these guys saying, stand up to be Hawaiian, but too, they're too afraid to be Kanakas. They're too afraid to be one Hawaiian. So, that's where this whole thing, you know, stands from. It's from brainwashed by this illegal United States of America and the illegal state of Hawaii. It's all brainwashed. So how are we gonna get them back? That's why I do that show on the, the truth because it is the truth. I'm not gonna coat it with candy or sugar or anything. It is the truth. The truth is the truth. I mean, you cannot hide it. No, that's you, you cannot. You're correct there. And a lot of people just get uncomfortable with the truth. Well, you know, because they, they are uncomfortable with the truth, it's because they cannot face the truth, that's right. You know, there, there's only two things that that God gave us, or religious or whatever, how they want to call it. It's the answer, yes and no. It is no in and, and if about it. There's only two things that you can give somebody, is the answer, yes or no. You either tell the truth, no in between. If anybody give you anything else but yes or no, then you know that's bullshit. You know? So, bottom line. <laughs> Let's take a look at our last little end here where the fence is and their markers. Yeah, there was a painted line all the way down the beach here yeah. for some reason. This was for the wall, I think. Oh, yeah. So they're supposed to get a metal pin somewhere. Yeah? Right, there you go. Yeah. So, what pin that, that is? I mean, is it a uh, boundary pin or of the hotel? Because that is, normally this is the, the called boundary pins, yeah? But if it's a boundary pin, then it's too close to the water. If that's the case, yeah? Yeah, that's not very far from the uh, knoll, is it? Yeah, because if this is the high water mark on a regular tide, you know, then it's, what, it's only how much feet? It's only about one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
30 feet away from that boundary pin. So, if this is the high water mark that the highest tide sits, and 13 feet to the boundary pin, where's the you know, beach access for the high water mark? I mean, we're talking about the last time I heard that they're trying to do was 40 feet. 40 feet is almost, almost to there, right where the this bike path is, or whatever they call it. Yeah, about there, yeah, about 40. And then if it's the old days, when I had the map, he goes, he said 150 feet. <laughs> so it's way the hell down there. I mean, so in basic order is what the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? Why is it you think you keep getting uh, stonewalled or, or sent to different departments when you try to ask for information that's supposed to be considered public? I think because, you know what? They're doing something very illegal. And the people like myself and other people is being stonewalled is because the county or the state is getting some kind of kickback for allowing all these things to happen. No matter if you hit water three feet or hit water at five feet, they're still gonna go ahead and do it. See, that didn't make any sense to me. And when I have talked personally to the departments, water, sewer, etc., they've told me there is no infrastructure for this type of, of uh, development. They uh, haven't done what they're supposed to do as developers, and yet it seems things still get pushed through. Yeah, exactly, because if you look at all the infrastructures for all these hotels, all done illegally and so now they want to sneak in this little guy here not legal little guy but this huge monstrous of, of the dinosauruses and the you know, big hotel i mean everything is done illegal well considering the, the road out there illegal loop is a private road yeah. and then they're wanting to bring in i'll just I don't know the exact number, I'll just say 300 and some units, the last I heard. Um, that's going to be 300 to 400 cars, which the highway and that road cannot handle as it is. We barely handle it when the traffic gets backed up. People use it as a, a uh, cut through and, and etc. cetera. Um, and that's why you brought up the good case about interest. Because this road, our roads cannot handle. Our roads cannot handle the traffic. I mean, we get road rage already, as it is. Then you're going to have the word affordable homes that they're going to sneak in. But the affordable homes is probably going to be for the employees or the bosses that they bring from America over here, which is more cars and more cars means you need more roads and with more roads you're gonna need more houses and with more houses come more children and with more children become more stores and more stores let's keep on adding and adding and adding well i know that there was a lawsuit years ago in regards to uh this development Coconut Beach Development, I believe it was, against the county and something about the highway, them wanting to, the county wanting them to pay for certain infrastructure and they didn't want to, and um, a number of different things that went on that doesn't seem, it doesn't make any sense on, on a lot of stuff considering how Waiapuli was put together and what they got away with, and now we have Cocoa Palms uh, supposedly closing on their property after so long, which in fact, what, two weeks ago, this property again has sold 
from the Coconut Beach development to someone we don't know yet, and that's kind of when this all stopped, but yet we still have this ugly fence here, not knowing if they have to go back through the permit to process, which from what I understand, and I could be totally wrong, they don't have. Well, that's what I heard too. They don't even have any kind of permit, because why wouldn't they show us if they did have one permit? But they're not showing us no permit whatsoever. They're just keeping sending us back and forth. So who's the stupid one here? After the first time when they say there's, there's a permit to go to here, here, and there's nothing, we're the stupid ones who go ahead and try to, okay, back and forth. It's like, what is this, two, two idiot guys they call them? Uh, Jeff and Mark. It's like Jeff and Mark. Okay, let's go over here. And then later on, let's go back. Okay, let's go back over here. It's <laughs> dumb and dumber, huh? Dumb and dumber. It's making us feel like we're dumb. It's, it's like I say again from the beginning. It's either yes or no. Either you have the permits or no, you don't have the permit. Why giving us the runaround? Well, I did read in the tolling agreement and a couple other things that they had a PDU and an SMAU giving this property um, a resort hotel type status. Well, if that's the case, wouldn't there be a permit for that? And the grubbing, grading, fencing might fall under that. I don't know that for an exact, but that would be available to anybody. Yeah. But that's why, you know, when we went to, uh, what's her name? The Arcade. Archaeologist lady? Oh, the state? The uh, archaeologic? Yeah, um, the one our friend. This nice skinny girl. Oh, Mary Jane. Mary Jane. And Mary Jane always telling us that they get the permit. They get the permit. But I don't know, under, I don't understand what permit are she talking about. And she said, oh, the permit for Bill? And I said, Mary Jane, I don't understand. Because, as far as I know, the, the process is, you, there's a certain process that you have to follow. So how can I, they out of a sudden build, which Mary Jane was telling me, that they have the right to go ahead and build. So it's kind of confusing, yeah? So with that, my head is like all turned around because I, Mary Jane is saying they get the permit, then I hear, they don't have permits. And I said, you know what? Well, didn't the planning department say that they had a copy of the permit? That's what they said, but they won't give it up. They won't show it, huh? They won't show nothing. But isn't it um, the right of yours to be able to see the permits, you know? Well, it's public information, yeah. isn't it? If, we're, if we go by what the state says. But, you know, again, the state... The illegal state of Hawaii is so corrupt, you know, make El Capong like, like, <laughs> like smoking cigars or cigarettes, you know, it's like nothing. Like the state of Hawaii is so corrupt, the county council is so corrupt, the mayor is so corrupt, everything is so corrupt. Make El Capong like a little baby compared to these guys, you know. I mean, jeez. <laughs> Well, as we get to the end here, we'll walk up through the road. Uh, we'll, we'll get your thoughts on all of this and other things going on around the Aina that you're aware of. I, they said it was over here or over here, if I'm not mistaken. Are you talking about the Heiau? Yeah, the internment. Internment? Yeah, that's what they call it, the internment. And this over here was disturbed ground? There again, here's ground that's been moved, grubbing and grating. Yeah. Dirt. But you know, I'm not sure where they're gonna put the interment. Is it over here or over there? But you know what? <laughs> the EVs is not for display. The EVs is never for display. It's, it's our, uh, you know, right. To our kupunas to be safe. And the safest place for them is to be left alone in the ground where they where they are right now. 
not to be on display for a tourist and make one wall or just a mound, which is what they're doing nowadays. They don't even have respect for the kupunas anymore. So, you know what? And you know whose fault that is? There's the illegal burial council. Those burial council, they're so illegal, it's unreal. And the evies that is found with the, in the ground, what happened to all the artifacts? For like, ever since they built the first hotels, what happened to all the artifacts that is found with the burials? So that have to be answered by the burial councils. And to me right now, the burial council is a bunch of idiots. It's, them, it's like those dumb and dumber guys over there. Oh, I didn't know. Or oh, did you know anything about this? Oh no, I didn't know. How come you didn't know anything about that? Bro, this is your ancestors. Don't go treat them like nothing, like rubbish. If you treat them like rubbish, then you are dumb and dumbers or just like that, rubbish. You rubbish yourself. And you will have to answer to your ancestors one day when you go and face them. Um, <laughs> I like I like the part my favorite part is that uh, I like the fishermen the howly fishermen tell me sir what do you catch <laughs> oh, God. Oh, wow jeez I'm lost. <laughs> well, here we are at the uh, pathway that everybody used to use over the, the years. As we walk out and end our little segment. What do you think, Jimbo? People need to be held accountable. Definitely. All those people for all these hotels, they all need to be a, uh, accountable for what they actually do. Because we keep telling them, where is your deed to the land? Who gave you the deed to the lands or they give you the Go ahead for go and destroy one ocean front areas for your development. They should definitely be accountable for what they were doing and the actions that they did. So yes, I think that they should be accountable for what they do. And that's everybody. It's not just uh developers or county and anybody who doesn't seem to take pride I guess in their Aina. Well you know to say something about that we have to look at it this way. When the first people that took care of this Aina was the original people which was fine. We was doing everything. We had no uh, murder, no hardly anything, because that was the way of the law. But when we became a, an illegal state, I hate that word, state, illegal state, they set the rules, they make the people more dependent on the, on Hawaii. They make the people so dumb, they make the people and their predecessors, their children after that, so dumb that they give up. So now that's why you have the own local people dumping trash on the roads, dumping diapers on the side of the roads, dumping cars and and rubbish and trash and and you know what? Most of the time, it's the local people is the ones that doing all this trash. How, it's, the howlers hardly they do that they, because most of the time I see the howlers picking up 
rubbish and things like that. It's mostly of the locals, the ones that is ignorant enough to not care or have respect for their family. Do you think that's because of the westernized culture that's come in? Oh, definitely, definitely. If there's any blame, I blame that on them because they are the ones that have dumbfounded our people and our children. So, you know. And they're always going to have a blame. Somebody's always is blamed for something like that. I mean, I'm not perfect. But I own up to what I do, and I don't do. I notice these trees here too as we're walking out, Jim, mm -hmm. that they've got uh, flags on them. Any thoughts? All these trees are going to be, if they ever do have their way, the trees going to be all down. we will cut it all down. Really? Because I know in their plans, supposedly now, this was before they sold the property, they were supposed to be left. Yeah. But you know, sometimes I'm thinking, yeah, who did they sell it to? To their own corporation within its own, you know, self. You know, and that's, that's the thing that really kind of make me think about this kind of people. But they, they would do something like that. For keeping within their own hui. That's what they do. Because that's how they do things. And a corporation is all about money. So they can sell it to themselves three, four times over. Just change their name, but as the same people. Yeah. It's like Abercrombie used to say, the old governor. It's all about land and money. <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, that, that's what he that kind he did. Yeah, and that nobody would ever let him forget what he did. Land and money. Here we are, where we normally access the road. It's blocked off. The only way to get in is down here toward the Marriott and down at the other end where the Beach Boy, very difficult to see. You know the some big boulders that they moved out there? Yeah. I seen one one boulder that normally would be used as one one ahu, one big oblong boulder. But I don't know if it's still there yet or not. But in the old days that's what they would use. That's how they used to mark a certain area with the oblong stone or some kind of pohaku or stone that they used for the point to mark. On certain area. A point of reference? Yeah. And I've seen one of them over there so far. But now I don't know where they put it. So in the old days, they had a lot of point of reference or, or one uh, hour pull out into a next hour pull out. They would use a certain kind of uh, big pohaku. But now everything is so destroyed. And I blame the uh, illegal state of Hawaii for it. Because they know, you know, they know protect the culture and, and uh, so the people, but they abuse it. I got the fish, uh, uh, what you call that, uh, statement from the county. Mission statement. I got the mission statement from the county. So now my next one is forget the uh, regular county. So I, like, I like to see all the differences between the make, you know, on the mission, the um, mission statements that they that they supposed to be doing, whether to for help the people or not. Well, here we are in a leak of loop with the fence going both ways. The end of our journey on this little story. Hey, 
let's go take a chain, okay? <laughs> So what is your ending thoughts on? My ending thoughts would that just be left alone and be turned into a park. Because there's no park over here for anybody. You know, if they say that it's for the tourists. They make it into a park for the tourists and the people, you know? Well, that's what the people need. If they like save paradise, or if they like save us, uh, something that is culture, save this. So, for the next generations and generations to come, at least you're gonna have a big open area that everybody can enjoy. What the, the white man or the holly, they call that a win-win situation. Right? <laughs> With uh, that word howly, is that really considered foreigner or is that white man? A howly, all it means is a person of a different color. It's like uh, a white person. You know, that's all. Basically, a howly person, person of different color. Different origin, just. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a black man. But everybody in America, they think a black man is, oh, is a bad word. No, it's not. We call a black man a black man. That's, good. That's the way our culture is. And a holy is called a white man. You know, it's nothing. But, oh, boy. Oh, why do you call me one? Why do you call me a black man? Jesus. I got called a brown monkey by white women before. We were on a bike path. You know, so. So, how did you feel when uh, they called you a uh, frown monkey? You know what? I the first I got mad because I know what was prejudice. When I was in the military, I had to find out what is prejudice real fast. And so, but when she called me a frown monkey, these two girls under their breath, you know, when they expected, call me a brown monkey. I got pissed, but I said, you know what? What can I do? I think I do not. If they saw what they, they feel they were are, then do for them. So I just let it go. And that's how I think everybody should be, especially in Hawaii. You are who you are. Whether if they call you a brown monkey, a black man, a white man, or a yellow man, or a red man, it's all a man. No matter what, however the way you cut it. Like one piece of pie, they all were the same. And just like a guy told me one thing, he said, "If you cut me open right now, and you cut yourself open, the blood is the same. And then if you look at it on the biblical side of it, we all the same, you know. So unless if you look on a scientific sense, you say that we come from monkeys." And we hang from trees. Well, I don't know about that. They kind of weird to me, if you ask me. But I don't. They didn't come from no monkey, that's for sure. So, but two girls call me a monkey, brown monkey. That's all right. It's okay. It's all good. No worries, yeah. yeah no worries. It's all good. Because sooner or later they're gonna have to be judged by themselves for what they calling out of people and things like that. Well, we are coming to the end, Jimbo. Just like you do on uh, The Truth and your uh, TV show, why don't you give a sign off, yeah? Okay. So you take care, my friends. I hopefully you guys can understand the truth, what's going on with this whole thing in Hawaii. Again, the state of Hawaii is corrupt, and it makes um, the criminals look like like little petty eddy kind of criminals, like that guy. Make, make sure that you guys understand that the uh, state of Hawaii is illegal and never was legal. Thank you. I'm tired of playing this bullshit. Oh, if and if. Because I learned 
dealing with all these kinds of stuff, you just have to just tell the truth, whether if you guys do have the permits or don't. Bottom basic life, that's it.